You are listening to the Think Brick Australia podcast. Think Brick Australia represents the clay, brick and paver manufacturers of Australia. Brick by Brick, our podcast will discuss technical information and architectural case studies with special guests. I'm your host, Elizabeth McIntyre, the CEO of Think Brick Australia. On today's podcast, we're actually going to be talking about brick arches and I'm pleased to welcome James Liu into our podcast session to talk about a modular product that only wants to be round. Welcome, James. Thank you for having me, Elizabeth. Now, we normally do start these sessions off by asking people whether they've got another use for brick outside of its intended use. Do you have such an idea? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, So recently I bought a puppy and he loves to bite things. Uh, There is a hole in the patio. Yes. My patio has a lot of holes because it's a very old home. (laughs) Uh, I use the brick to cover up that hole so he doesn't chew and make it even worse. Worse. And I would imagine that biting on the brick might be painful for him. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But uh, he's very, very disinterested at the brick. So he just chews on something else. (laughs) (laughs) That's one we haven't had before. Well, look, today, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking about brick arches. And it's such a fascinating topic for me. I remember about, I think, maybe five or six years ago at the Think Brick Awards, we looked at the Duomo in Italy, which everyone thinks is actually a tiled roof. And it actually is bricks that make that arch. And I went back into study it when I was preparing for my speech. And the way they used to test arches back in those days would would be they'd actually get everything set up and then they'd run out of the area and just hope to see whether it it stood there and and passed or failed meant it would crumble on down and I'm so glad that we've moved beyond that now (laughs) but if we were thinking about brick arches and, and what we do need to think about what are the two kind of main purposes for using brick arches in design? Yeah so a brick arch in simple layman terms is a type of lintel And what that does is it helps support any opening that you have underneath it. And it transfers all of that vertical force into the walls that are next to the arches. So when we say lintel, we also normally just think of something underneath a window, for example. Is that is that a good way of explaining it in Exactly. Yeah. So anything that is an opening. So that might be a door, that might be a walkway, a corridor, Mm -hmm. that might be even a window, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay. So That's its purpose. What are we thinking about when we're looking to put some arches into a building? So one of the design considerations for a brick arch is that you can put a keystone or a larger brick uh, at the top of your arch. And what that does is sort of absorb the compressive loads from anything on top of it. And the top of the arch is the main area of where cracking occurs right so you know those old buildings that we go into or even churches there's always that sort of different stone like at the top of the arch is that what you're calling the keystone yeah exactly right exactly so in a lot of old european architecture they like to put something distinctive yeah uh, and decorative (laughs) exactly exactly so that's a main that's one of the main design considerations when it comes to uh, designing a brick arch And does it have to be there, James? Like if you just wanted to do, I mean, I've seen a lot of brick arches that don't have that keystone. Does that matter if it doesn't? It is an option. Yes. People like to put a keystone there. People like to put a normal brick there to Uh maintain its uniform look. Yes. But a keystone definitely brings a lot more character when it comes to designing a brick arch. All righty. Secondly, the length of the wall that is next to the arch must be longer than the height of the arch itself. And that is because since the compressive loads from anything above the arch is transferred to the side of the walls, we have to make sure that the length of the wall is longer than the height of the arch. That makes sense. So, you know, you can't be building anything where the capacity of it failing is because you've sort of got this arch and then not enough either side to support it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. (laughs) Sometimes for architects especially, they don't like the look of a longer wall on either side because it you know it looks bland however if they want to put additional arches next to it next to an arch so let's say you have five arches right with very very minimal length of walls yes you can add a buttress which okay. is a support pretty much like a pillar like a pillar or okay. a column okay. or even an existing wall right okay interesting james i'm looking at a term here called abutment what does abutment mean 
So the abutment is anything that is next to the arch itself. Right, butting on up. That is is exactly right. (laughs) Okay. And what do we need to consider in the abutment there? Sure. So we need to consider two different types of loads. Mm -hmm. The first load is the concentrated load, which is any load that is acting on top of the arch itself. Those loads, as I mentioned before, is distributed to the abutments or the length of the wall itself. Mm Mm-hmm. The second load that we need to consider is any out-of-plane loads, such as wind loads. Right. As that can knock over the wall and you don't want that happening. And, and just a reminder to our listeners that we're talking about the considerations referencing AS3700. That's right. That's the main standard for masonry structures. And what do we need to think about structurally? I mean, we're obviously looking at support here, but is there any structural considerations we need to think about? No, not really. But the main considerations can be found in the masonry standard. AS3700, as well as AS4773, which is masonry in small buildings. They should be used in conjunction with each other. Great. Now, there are some arches that unfortunately do fail. What are the main reasons that the arches fail? Well, due to the curvature nature of brick arches themselves, sometimes when people construct arches, they like to remove the props too early. Oh, okay. And if they remove the props too early, the mortar doesn't set. Uh, in time so when the mortar doesn't set if you think about glue yes the structure will fall down pretty much okay all right so don't don't remove those props before you need to that's right now the other thing that we saw particularly in the arc project by koichi takata was all of this beautiful detailing what are some of the considerations we need to think about with that with brick arches brick arches are mainly cosmetic right so there's a lot of freedom a lot of degrees of freedom when it comes to designing your brick arch. And this can include using regular bricks. They can include using larger bricks. They can even include using tapered bricks, which are bricks that slowly narrow as you run along the length of that brick. So architects have a lot of freedom when it comes to designing their brick arches. And it's not singular or singled out to one particular scope. Okay. Just before we finish off, let's talk a little bit about the depth of the arch. Sure. So just a typical rule of thumb, as the arch depth increases, the arc span tends to increase as well. And the reason why we do that is because to maintain uh, consistency as well as uh, visual appeal. So everything doesn't look out of proportion. Makes sense. So just tell me, James, whether I've, I've got the main points right about brick arches. The first consideration which we're going to start with is that we are referencing Australian Standards 3700 and also Small Building Standard 4773. Thank you. When we're designing an arch, we want to ensure that there's enough abutment either side of the arch and that the arch itself we're going to consider or not whether a keystone is required and that's really that special kind of brick sometimes that not only is a feature but provides that extra stability in terms of load compression. The next thing that we're going to think about is just how much it needs to be supported during the construction process and trying to do things quickly with an arch probably isn't the way to go. If the mortar isn't dry, we may have it raining bricks, which is not desirable. And the the fourth sort of thing that I'm hearing from you today is just with detailing and we see that architects love doing this with arches and there's a fair amount of freedom with regards to this. But you also mentioned that the arch depth should increase with the arch span just to maintain that consistency and visual appeal so it doesn't look lopsided have i got those key points correct yeah definitely (laughs) one point (laughs) thank you james thanks for coming and talking about making our beautiful modular bricks curvy with our special tech talk on arches thanks for having me James, as you know, one of the beauties of podcasts is you can multitask and do other things whilst you're listening. And some of what we were talking about graphically looks a lot easier to understand. Where can our listeners find some more information? So you can find some more information on our ThinkBrick website as we have a Brick Arch fact sheet uh, on our fact sheets page. So I highly recommend you guys check that out. As you mentioned, there are a lot of different diagrams on there that can help you uh, understand this content a lot more clearly. Thanks, James. And there's always a link in our show notes. That's right. (laughs) If you have enjoyed this podcast, please follow, rate and review our podcast. 
we are always looking for new ways to think brick. If you have an idea of what you'd like to hear about, there's a link in our show notes to let us know.